A little over 20 years ago, on my seventh wedding anniversary, I came up to my wife and I said, I have some news for you. And she goes, yeah, what's going on? I said, um, well, it's bad news. Um, I'm having an affair with one of your friends from church. It's not exactly the anniversary present you want to give or the news that's even welcome. Hey guys, uh, welcome back. This month we're here with uh, Joel Hesh. He is the founder of Proven Men Ministry. So not only is his story kind of the bedrock of Proven Ministry story, but he's also worked to write a lot of the curriculum for us. He is a tenured law professor at a local university and we're excited to be on with him. Thanks. Hey Joel, hey. thanks for being here, man. Awesome, great to be with you today. Yeah, how are you? I'd say swell. Yeah. Exactly. We'll go with swell. I like it, man. I like it yeah. a lot. Yeah. So Proven Proven Ministry has been around for a while. I think we just hit our 18th birthday, which means your story goes back even further. Um, I imagine you got into this stuff because of personal experience. So yeah. Yeah. love to hear that story and how that played yeah. out for you. Yeah. About a little over 20 years ago, on my seventh wedding anniversary, I came up to my wife and I said, I have some news for you. And she goes, yeah, what's going on? I said, um, well, it's bad news. Um, I'm having an affair with one of your friends from church. It's not exactly the anniversary present you want to give or the news that's even welcomed. And uh, so that was a sort of a, a defining pivotal moment in our, in our lives and in our relationship. Mm. It was one of those where I took a risk and I said, I just have to stop mm. lying, telling secrets. I just have to. Mm. I have to um, take a risk here, mm. and uh, the good news is it became a um, uh, it became a we problem, not just a he problem. That's mm. what I love about how my wife approached this, mm. and it was a journey that we we uh, we've been on for the past I don't know twenty three years, I guess now. Mm. That's cool, Joel. Yeah, heartbreaking uh, mm -hmm. yet beautiful at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that stood out to me in what you were just saying, beyond that harrowing anniversary gift, mm -hmm. um, the the desperation piece. Yeah. Can you play that out a little bit? I um, you hear a lot, even with like any sort of addiction, that like hitting rock bottom right. is a thing. So like, how did I guess? How did you get into? Comes right. to like kind of sexual right. morality, pornography, whatever it might be. Like, how did you get into it? Yeah. But then also, what was that journey like of hitting rock bottom? Sure, sure. Well, my generation before the cell phones and all of that, uh, there was actually you know Playboys that were in magazines. Mm -hmm. And at a very early age, whether it was ten or twelve, I can't quite remember what it was. I found my first one. Mm -hmm. And when you uh, here's the deal: when you add to the mix pornography with adolescence and learning masturbation all those things it was just a toxic almost like a an explosive environment i got mm -hmm. immediately hooked on on lust pornography masturbation became a daily habit for me from as early now as i can really remember mm -hmm. and it just it just um segued into through high school into college and it, and it just mm -hmm. always continued with me mm -hmm. um one of the moments in my life when i was in law school I was when I became born again, I had that experience with mm. that Jesus became Lord of my life. But it was exciting, but yet um, somewhat disappointing at the same time. And don't mm. don't take it the wrong way. But I thought the moment I became a born again believer, it would just go away. I'd not be tempted. Mm. And then mm. uh, reality s set in that I'm still masturbating. I'm still lusting after every woman I've ever met. Mm. And so um, I, I fed into this lie of, It'll go away then when I get married. Mm. Not when I get saved, but when I get married. This is yeah. just what single men yeah, yeah, yeah. do to carry us forward. And as soon as I'm married, all temptations, everything just goes away. Yeah. Then I got married. Mm. And um, beautiful, awesome, wonderful woman yeah. didn't go away. Mm. So now Satan fed me the lie of, well, I'm defective. Now I'm the only Christian married man mm. that mm. masturbates, looks at porn, and has a sexual addiction. And so for me, I just, I just had to continue to hide and, and really live two lives, mm. the, the, the outside and the inside. Mm. And the inside, I allowed myself to lust. And, mm. and you know what? I actually pursued it. I, I pretty much lusted after every woman I've ever met. Mm. And I've actually done the math. I don't know why anyone would want to do that, but I've done the math, and it's over a million mm. sexual fantasies that I've allowed to, mm. you know, sexual lusts and things that I've allowed to go mm. through. And so now I'm married 
seven years into my marriage, um, I'm flirting. So it's going beyond just my memory and mind. And I'm actually flirting with women and, and contemplating, hmm, maybe, I, maybe I'll have an affair. Mm. But that was the one line that I said I would never cross. And there was a, a point in time where I asked a, another woman to go to bed with me. Mm. And uh, that just woke me up. Yeah. And I said, this isn't who I am. This isn't who I want to be. I need help. And so I took I took a risk. I went and talked to my pastor and went and talked to my wife all both on the same day. Mm. And much to my surprise and, and utterly pure joy was the pastor cried, hugged me, said, uh, sounds like you're a sex addict, don't know what to do with you, but I'll journey with you. Yeah. And my wife says, I knew something was wrong in our marriage. I knew that your heart was was given over somewhere else. And I just didn't know how to uh, what know what to do about it. Yeah. And so I, for the first time in my life, I told my whole story. No secret. Satan has no control, no blackmail over me. Mm. And I felt just so free. It's like a backpack just stripped off of me. Mm. And I was actually flying high. <laughs> you know, my wife had kind of kept, you know, left behind a little sure. bit holding the bag. But, but that, was, that was a moment of freedom for me. But I was scared to death because, like, I still don't know how to stop. And I'm still tempted just as much the next day as I was the day before. And so the next three months were, were quite a journey. They were, you know, I always say it's like I was in a foxhole in Iraq. That's how bad it was mm. of dealing with, with taking captive every single thought. Because mm. I used to lust after every single woman. Now I'm catching myself lusting and calling it sin, repenting, and turning from it. I'm in counseling. I'm talking to other men. Mm. I'm learning how to be open and honest. All of those things. And it was, it was just uh, exhausting. Mm. So for the first three months, it was just like totally wiped out. Then the next, you know, um, nine months got easier. Mm. And so at the end of a year, it's like, wow, is this what a, what a normal brain is like yeah. a, a year later? And then two more years later, I had changed so dramatically that the church in which I had an affair approached me and said, would you be on our elder board? Mm. Would you help be a leader of our flock? Mm. And... Um, and, and that sort of um, spurred me into saying, well, what, what was it? What, what caused that transformation? Mm -hmm. And that's when the Lord really placed in my heart the, the Proven Ministries and what, mm -hmm. and what Proven stands for. And, and just gave me this burden. He said, you know, there's a passage in the Bible that says, you know, praise be to the God of all comfort, mm -hmm. who comforts us in all of our distress, mm -hmm. so that we may comfort others mm -hmm. with the same comfort we ourselves have received. Mm. And so from that moment on, I, I was felt compelled mm. to share my story, compelled to help others. Not that I really wanted to. It's not that exactly the career choices. You're a lawyer, go tell the world you're a sex addict or at least a former sex addict. Yeah. That's not a career choice that no. you'd make. But I was so compelled to do that because God had shown me a healing path. Mm. And I just, I feel compelled to share that. Mm. That's a remarkable journey. Man, that's heavy. So your wife didn't leave you. Mm -hmm. She stuck around. How mm -hmm. was that process for her, I, I imagine? Uh, there are a few pieces that you had in there. There's like one kind of the, the, the lie of even maybe meeting Jesus that like because he's in the light, you won't have to live in the light, you know, mm -hmm. but he like, mm -hmm. like commands that we come in the light with him and that we live there. Mm -hmm. in that space with them mm -hmm. but then that also that that lie of singleness right where it's like okay once i get married all my problems will go away yeah, but then yeah. the other lie even then for married people where it's like well if i were to tell my wife she'd leave that's me right. that's she'd right. leave me that's right so are you able to to speak into just some of the things that she was able to do or any of the ways she was able to be present with you in that space yeah yeah i really love that how you pointed those three lies out because mm. that i think keeps men on the bench mm. i think that's what is so debilitating for men is one is if i'm really born again i should never sin again yeah well we know unless our name is jesus that's yeah. not really where we're at yeah and then two it, you know if you're single it's okay yeah. and three it'll go away when you get married mm. and because all those things feed that it really is debilitating and that's mm. why I, it's so important for us to to share stories like this that it's that those are lies but the good news is god's in the business of restoring and redeeming mm. now the good news for me is is my wife really um wanted to work on our marriage and mm. she's you know we, we loved each other it was never a question that we didn't love each other 
Um, now, but for her journey, it's slightly different. Now, she's like, what do I do with all this information? How do, you know, what's in there for me? I mean, right now, your burden is lifted. You've come clean. You're on this new journey. And she felt a little bit like left behind. But the good mm. news is, is uh, she had her own encounter with Jesus. She was saying, what am I supposed to learn through this? Rather than why me? Why is it? Why did you give me that husband? You know, she goes, "What? What is it that you want me to learn? How am I supposed to grow?" And she started even looking at her own life, and it's like, "In what areas do I complain? What areas of my uh, things that that uh, I need to grow?" Mm. And so she was on a journey. I was on a journey, but then we decided, "What a better way to really solidify our marriage is to journey together mm. for the first time, really." Because I'm being open and honest and real and vulnerable. We're spending quality time. And, I get, and it's funny because I'm like starting to get to know her mm. in a way I've never known her before. I'm like, wow, mm. I really like you. Mm. <laughs> so I didn't have to hide. I, you know, it's just like she could, she, I could open myself up and she didn't throw me away. She mm. didn't reject me. I'm a work in progress. And she goes, well, I can deal with that. In fact, she would say, I would rather have a man who struggles and tells the truth mm. than one who lies. Mm. And so when I turned that corner and said, I'm done with the lies, I'm done with the secrets, mm. we had something we could work with. Mm. Mm. Teresa is an incredible woman. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of Teresa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so jumping into then the, the proven piece, um, why that name? I asked God, I said, how did I change? Mm. And he said, well, you have to be passionate for me instead of yourself mm. you need to be repentant mm. and change mm. you need to be open and honest which mm. i wasn't you want victory it's in my strength not your own because every day i used to say take away the temptation take away the temptation and i tried to my you know the 10 list and things i did all those things and god's mm. not in none of your strength in my strength mm. have an eternal perspective it's not about my rights my circumstances mm. and then the missing component that most men do is this network with other men mm. do it on my own Put my own bootstraps and, and god said those are the components and the next thing i know i just spelled a word yeah it's like p-r-o-v-e-n and i was like oh my gosh and so i said i wonder if i can even get a website called proven man or yeah. something and it was even there yeah and so it was like i really believe you know i know so many people say god spoke to me in this way but i really believe god mm. pressed on my heart to mm. use that acronym because those are the the components that used god used to change and restore my life hmm. um obviously a, a, a kind of entire movement now is around that 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 proven idea the proven mm -hmm. identity the proven mm -hmm. acronym mm -hmm. when you were going through um well the three months of kind of a just a, a hellish kind of foxhole in iraq disposition um what are some of the things that you wish even before then, like even when you were in the sin, like is, is there something that you'd wish you'd had that maybe you didn't have that like would have prevented you from needing to hit rock bottom? Or do you think that's like a, a necessary place that people need to hit? Like, no, what do you I, think? I, I love that. You know, men don't want to network mm. and be open and real and vulnerable. In fact, I remember a man came up to me in my in my church way back when and said, hey, can we like get together and talk about stuff? I said, I don't need to do that. Yeah. Well, I did. Yeah. You know, I, I, what I really wish is, is that we would be a band of brothers, mm. you know, proven brothers, proven sisters. I really wish that we mm. would, you know, be, be just mm. sharing life together and not let ourselves get, you know, caught in the dark by wandering mm. and then there's a little more secrets and next thing you know we stop we stop having accountability and with other men and yeah and we're just left on our own and god mm. doesn't want it that way mm. yeah that's heavy mm -hmm. i know that um the light is scary because you're seen in the light and other people can see you and not just that you can see yourself which freaks me out personally mm -hmm. as much as anyone else seeing me mm -hmm. Uh, but learning that God is gentle in the light, you know, that he then clothes you in mm -hmm. the light. Um, it shifts things, yeah. honestly. But like that light initially is terrifying. Yeah. It's just a yeah. terrifying thing. 
Well, you know, one of the other reasons that, that men stay stuck is that we don't really understand the root issue. Mm. And I, some people might push back on this, but I had no idea just how selfish and proud that I was mm. until someone said, you're selfish. Mm. And I, of course, I want to say, no, I'm not, <laughs> right. and do that. But this is what I did. I just went home, took a blank sheet of paper out, and I said, okay, God, reveal to me, am I selfish? I just started writing selfish and pride. And I started writing down things. And some of it were just little things like, when I'm at a wedding, I like the corner piece of cake because that's where all the frosting is. Well, there's only four of those, but I'm going to make sure I get one of those. Well, that's pretty much a selfish, proudful person would think. It's not even I'm your in, wedding, right? It's not even yeah, my wedding. Yeah. I'm entitled to one yeah. of those. And I just started listing all the ways in which I'm selfish and proud. And next thing I know, I stopped writing, and, and tears actually flowed from my eyes. And I said, move over, Paul. Hmm. I'm the chief of all sinners. Hmm. And the cool thing is this. I'm not saying my sins were worse than someone else's. Yeah. But the heart spirit that God gave me was in his presence, in his standard of holiness. I am the chief of all sinners. Yeah. And once I got to the point where I'm going like, I need to do business with my pride and my selfishness. Mm -hmm. Then I realized as I do that, it lessens the pull of pornography and lust and those things. Because we chase after them because we think we deserve them or mm -hmm. it's a... It's a, a reward for a bad day that we've had. And we all have our, our, our reasons why we do that. But, yeah. but I really want to help men understand, you know, our war isn't just against pornography. It's not here's the 10 things to do. If you just stop looking at pornography, you're going to be right in God's eyes. And God's going like, no, I'm, I didn't make you so that you didn't look at pornography. Yeah. I made you for fellowship with me and, and all that. And it's our pride and selfishness that's mm. really a, one of the stumbling blocks. Yeah, I think that's a, a good contrast because it's, it's easy to especially like in the flesh to frame Christianity as what you can't do. You know, when you read like even like the entire of the Old Testament, it's like it's all stories about how God is like, I want you so badly. I want you so badly. And like and then God's people giving themselves elsewhere, giving themselves elsewhere. Right. And then God gets to the point where it's like, well, forget it. I'm just going to send my son. Yeah. I will send my son yeah. and you will reject him. But you will always have access to me. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's just a crazy story when you look at it through that paradigm. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, the point of selfishness is um, difficultly acute. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. um, even, even the idea of fantasizing is um, I can have whoever I want, however I want them. It goes one step worse than that. Mm -hmm. When you fantasize like that, aren't you saying... I wish I had a life different than the one God gave me. Mm. I, mean, that really, I mean, that really hurts me. I'm going like, I wish I had a different, fill in the blank, a different wife, a different job, different this, a different life. And so when I escape into that fantasy, I am king. I am God. God. Yeah. And so those things were like, ouch, those hurt. Yeah. But at the same time, I didn't know how to stop. Mm. I didn't know how to rewire my brain. I didn't know how to do that. Mm. And I couldn't do it on my own. I needed to link up with other men like you mm. and, and Nick and, and, the, and the, other, the other proven team. I mm. needed that in my life because mm. I couldn't do this on my own. Mm. And I grew to enjoy that because at first it was like, I'm not hugging another man. I'm not telling another man these stories. In fact, I made a vow that I would never tell another human being that I masturbated. And here I am now in a book, on TV, on, on podcasts, sharing my story. Nothing to brag about. I'm, it's not that. It's I'm not, Satan has no more power over me mm. because I can be open and honest and I have brothers who care for me. And, and you know what? When I do stumble, I'm not judged. Mm. And that's the other thing I really want to, I want to bring this other point really home to, to those people listening is the mark of a proven man is not the absence of sin, mm. but how you respond to a setback. Mm. And that's the only reason that I continue mm. and continue with this ministry because we still are humans, we still have setbacks, but what do we do in response? Mm. We get back up and, and, and it's just the coolest thing to, yeah. to be with guys that don't judge, but don't have to be perfect. We, we can be real yeah. and vulnerable and open and honest. Amen. Or even failure is an opportunity to know Jesus better. That's how we grow. Amen. That's how we grow. Amen. Um, so 18 years later, so obviously several years of just cleaning house That's right. and learning to be well That's with right. your wife That's and right. with the faith family that God had around you. 
uh, after a few years, um, God's people are like, hey, what God has poured into you, we, we want you to come and be a father of this church and just be a part of, of what God's building here. And then he started bringing you on this journey of creating curriculum yeah. for this stuff. Yeah. Uh, I know it's gone through like several revisions. Right. Um, and you would even lead groups, right? You were leading I, started groups leading, I started leading groups, gosh, even more than 18 years ago. Mm. Um, pro- probably 20, almost 20 years ago, I started leading groups. I just, I, I just said, anybody want to come over to my house, and let's just hang out and talk about this issue. Yeah. Didn't have any curriculum. Yeah. Didn't have any idea what I was doing. Yeah. But twice a year for the past almost 20 years, mm. I have been just leading groups in my basement, mm. and through just all those interactions with so many men and hearing so many stories and so much victory, but mm. so much pain and and all of that. God just placed on my heart hmm. this study, and yes, it's been edited and tweaked along the way, but but it really was a product of of um, just doing it with just doing life with a bunch of guys. Other men, yeah, yeah. and uh, and it really is um, it it's an overflow of your relationship with Jesus as well. Mm-hmm. That's what I often tell people because it's twelve weeks long, which is a huge commitment. And people come to us and be like, hey, "Can it be sh-? like, hey, this is awesome? Can it be yeah. shorter?" And it's like. Well, dude, like your people have been addicted to this stuff for years and you wanted to be all right in three yeah. weeks, yeah. you know, it's know. like, well, no. And then like other people are like, well, why does it work? And it's like, honestly, there is no secret sauce. Like, like literally the 12, yeah. it just makes you every day for 12 weeks. Look at Jesus. Exactly you right. look at Jesus. And then w- once a week you get together with other people who are doing the exact same thing, mm-hmm. you know, and the reflection of his face, that becomes the image that you be, it, it reshapes your soul. And a kind of a counter image that pornography has been shaping your soul as right. as an image for That's all right. those years leading up, That's and right. it, it bears incredible fruit. Yeah. And there really is no secret; it just makes you sit down and look yeah. at Jesus. Yeah, and there's even studies today that say if you use a hard book rather than a computer watching a video, you are changed by it more. You get more out of it. Yes. And so we still have the hard hard yeah. copy, and a lot of people think that's old school, but old school is a new. New school. New school. I like it. It really man. is. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, so, uh, 18 years. Here we are today. Um, we've been overseas twice. We've got churches that we partner with from Virginia to California. And uh, and we've got full-time staff. We've got our own mm-hmm. office space. How, I don't know. When you when you look at, like, as you're, on the, you're on the board, so you're not even in the office. But, like, when you come in and... When you sit down with the team and whatnot, like I, I don't know, when you look at something like this, like what are some of the things that go through your through your mind? You know, it's it's a it's kind of an a, an interesting journey for a founder of of a ministry. I had two choices. One is I could hold on to it and be the only person and be the one running this, or two, I could hand the baton to those that God has called to to lead. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad I handed the baton. I never really felt God calling me to do that, mm. and yet I couldn't keep it in my basement forever. It mm-hmm. had to be, it had to be, you know, those the, the, those those batons. So for me to have the opportunity to work with you and Nick and Marshall and just you know everybody, you know, behind the scenes here has been remarkable. Mm. I couldn't have I couldn't have imagined it. Mm. It's just like you know yeah, I'm almost still can't imagine it, and I know that God's going to um, take this. Not just worldwide, but I guess universe wide, mm. or whatever word is bigger than that. But he's gonna he's gonna bring enough people and men and women and and it's just gonna be incredible to see what it's gonna be. Amen. Yeah. I like um so you were saying that you lead a group about twice a year. Still do. Yeah. yeah. And uh and one of those groups falls into the space where your wife's birthday is. Mm. And she always wants you to lead on that night. Can you share why? Well, I, t- I tell the guys, when you are in a group, everything that can go wrong, every distraction is going to be in your, in your relationship. For instance, your wife's going to have a birthday on, let's say I do it on Monday night. Your wife's going to have a birthday on Monday night or work's going to demand more. Everything to keep you out from fellowshipping and networking during this season of, of time. Mm-hmm. And so this is what I, we're teaching men. And my wife said, what better birthday present for me or for any woman 
is for you to be in a group with men mm. learning how to be a better husband. Yeah. And so she'd rather have that than roses or a box of chocolates. Yeah. So, so my wife is so supportive because she knows mm. that not just the men need it, mm. but I need it. Mm. You know, that's the thing about being a leader of a ministry is I am not an expert. I am not beyond this. Yeah. I am a human. I'm a man just like others. I need these same things just like anyone else. But my wife, getting back to her, is, is she is so supportive because mm. she gets the fruit of that. Mm. She has a man who's honest, who pursues her, who mm. cherishes her, rather than one that was, was always had an eye, you know, a little swivel, mm. you know, wondering, you know, if I can find some hidden, you know, mm -hmm. guilty pleasure somewhere else. And so she yeah. would rather have a man who goes on her birthday yeah. into a proven men meeting. Yeah, amen. It's um, it's kind of the um, the contrast where on the anniversary, you told her that news That's right. you know, twenty two years ago, mm -hmm. um, versus now every birthday, yeah. right? She says, yeah. Uh, yeah. "I want you, I would for my birthday this year. I want you to continue to be well, yeah. right? I want you to yeah. continue to live in the light and yeah. cherish me." You know, there's so many dichotomies or, yes, or, or yes. things in in my story. When I, uh, um, early in my career, I had a secret clearance mm -hmm. so that I could work on, um, on a, a secret clearance at the Department of Justice where I used to work. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I was keeping secrets. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's, there's just one thing after another of how, how mm -hmm. God just flips everything yeah. and just corrects everything. Yeah. So, yeah, so on my anniversary, I tell my wife I'm having an affair, but on her birthdays now, I'm uh, holding groups. Yeah, I had a, a, a secret clearance. While well, I had secrets, I don't have a secret clearance anymore, but I don't have any secrets yeah. anymore. It's just yeah. one thing after another. It's just so, if you just take the time to see how God is moving in our lives, yeah. it's pretty incredible. Yeah. Yeah, he never stops. Amen. Yeah, and no man is too far gone mm. to mm. be restored and redeemed. No man is too far gone to have a relationship with him or with with a spouse or a future spouse. It, it, the beautiful thing is God is in the business of restoring, mm. not condemning. Mm. Mental. Any final word? That sounded like a really good one to end on. Is, is there anything else that you would no, care I'm, to share with us no, today? No, but uh, it's, it's such a privilege to be here with you mm. and with the entire team. And mm. uh, I'm praying for you. I'm, I'm in your corner. Mm. And uh, I, I hope that uh, we just uh, can get this message out to all the men, women, wives, husbands, you know, even children of, of marriages. I, I just hope that we can, we can give a message of hope. Yeah. I mean, that really is. And it's not just, a, so it's a lot of work. What, anything worthwhile is a lot of work. So there are people here that won't judge you. There's people here that, that uh, can journey with you. So yeah. don't go it alone. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You are a big brother and a father to many of us, and we are grateful for you. Thanks for taking time just to be with us today. My pleasure, brother. Really appreciate it, man. Yeah. Guys, um, that's my time with Joel. Thank you uh, just for being with us. And uh, if you want to read, so he, he wrote out his story in conjunction with some other stories. Um, you can check that out right here, as well as in the show links, we'll put something. Um, he's got a kind of a proven path that outlines a series of stories, but then the, the proven workbook, which is a 12 week study that is absolutely incredible. Uh, it's very simple and it just bears a lot of fruit. So uh, we'll have both of those up and thanks for being with us. Look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thanks. That was fun. That was awesome. Easy peasy. Hey guys, thank you so much for taking the time to watch the Proven Men YouTube channel. If you would like to see more encouraging Proven Men content, subscribe to our channel and you'll be sure not to miss a thing. And if you feel as Proven Men's impacted you and you'd like to partner with us to continue to reach others, please consider clicking the link in the description below to give today. Thank you so much again for watching and don't forget to subscribe.